Obito Mask's explanation. Identity. Identity encompasses the memories, experiences, relationships, and values that create one sense of self. It fosters internal harmony and serves as a behavioral compass, enabling individuals to orient themselves towards the future. This amalgamation creates a steady sense of who one is over time. But what if you have to throw away and live without an identity that you yourself fabricated? What if you lose your face, your belongings, lose your home, lose your attachments, and on top of that, you are thought to be dead by everyone? This is exactly what Obito Uchiha went through. After being crushed by a boulder, pronounced dead by his village, and watching his beloved get killed by his comrade, he soon lost his reason for existence. His worldview changed forever. Obito abandoned his identity as a once shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village and thereafter lived under different names. Throughout all the identity changes Obito went through, he always donned a mask. A mask to hide his face as he posed and acted as a different personality. He primarily went by the aliases Toby and Madara Uchiha, one who's annoying and another who everyone was just afraid of. There are three different masks he can be seen wearing, and each one has its own significance and design, and we'll be discussing all three of them. But first things first, like this video, subscribe, and hit that noti bell. Spiral Mask Starting off, the Spiral Mask, or also known as the Swirl Mask, is the first mask that Obito ever wears. The design represents the Kamui Jutsu, which is the dimensional switch ability of Obito's Mangayeku Sharingan. Kamui allows the user to transfer objects to and from another dimension. These transfers are often characterized by a spiraling void that targets swirl into or out of, distorting their form as they move between dimensions, which is probably too overpowered, especially when the series just started. The mask also symbolizes the facial features that Toby, a white Zetsu companion of Obito, possessed. This is the reason why the mask was initially intended to be white. Obito first wore it en route to saving Rin and Kakashi. The white Zetsu supported Toby by wrapping his body over him after the boulder's impact rendered him fully debilitated and helpless. With Toby protecting him, Obito was able to overcome his disability and gain a significant amount of strength as well. One of the hypotheses that came about due to the name Toby was that Toby had to be Obito because of how similar their names were where Toby plus Obito equals Tobito. It was one of the more widely held theories about Toby's identity, but it was also one of the most ridiculous due to how cliche it was. Well, I suppose Kishimoto is the only one who is currently laughing. Moving on, despite his increased strength, Obito also acquired several new skills with this mask, one of which I already discussed in Kamui. Obito embraces Kamui as his preferred battle strategy to the extent that he hardly ever employs more traditional ninjutsu maneuvers. So, he's basically a spammer. He uses his intangibility both offensively and defensively during combat to his advantage, making him vulnerable to enemy attacks. His body was altered and Hashirama's cells were transplanted, increasing his chakra stores and giving him the ability to regenerate. Obito developed a variety of jutsus under Madara's guidance, from deadly ninjutsu to potent barriers to paralyzing foes. All Uchiha clan members have the drawback that they go blind after obtaining the Mangayeku Sharingan, but this wasn't the case for Obito because the white zetsu that covered his body also gave him healing properties. So it appears that Obito was also not affected by the blindness of the Mangayeku Sharingan seems to cause. The mask was originally white, but it was later seen to be colored orange by Obito. There isn't a surefire theory about this. Maybe it could be because of his personal preference, or maybe it could be because of his relation to the Uzumaki clan, as the orange mask also somehow resembles the Uzumaki clan symbol. This mask was used in most of his appearances throughout the series, starting from our introduction to the character of Toby to the final arc. The character of Toby also showcased a completely different personality as compared to Obito. One common theory that fans came up with was that his change in behavior was due to split personality disorder. In the Naruto series, Toby could have been the manifestation of the fun and goofy side of Obito, which he didn't really get to showcase in the show. 
The most likely explanation was to keep his identity a secret from the audience. Fans didn't realize it was Obito until much later, which may have been the reason he continued to impersonate someone else even while he was alone with Zetsu. Or he may have just been hit with the boulder too hard. When Nagato died, Toby went to Conan to ask her where she had buried him, which led to one of the most notable fights Obito had while donning this mask. He longs to possess the Rinnegan Nagato held. Conan refuses to provide him with any information and engages him in a fight to the death. With both opponents going head to head, the bout was one of the most memorable in the series. Nine Tails Mask Chronologically, this is the first mask to appear, so basically the order that his mask appears has different timelines more confusing than fate. Anyway, it has a brown shade color and its design represents each one of the nine tails. In the past, during incidents like the Uchiha Massacre and the Hidden Leaf Invasion, Obito utilized this mask most frequently. When attacking the Hidden Leaf Village to seize the Nine Tails Beast, Toby, or you could say Obito, made use of this mask primarily to battle Minato. It was a vulnerable time for Kushina, as Naruto was just born, making it a perfect time to steal Kurama. He was able to subdue Kurama and then set him loose on the Hidden Leaf. The fourth Hokage, Minato, was successful in taking down Obito and preserving the settlement. Then Minato divided Kurama's chakra, placing half in Naruto and the other half in himself. Ultimately, this episode resulted in the deaths of Minato and Kushina. The fact that his own prized student was the man wearing the mask was unknown to Minato. Which is weird that he killed them without remorse considering how much Obito respected Minato. Also, unlike the Spiral Mask, this mask has no unique qualities. It simply symbolized his ambition to catch the Nine Tails and accomplish Tsukomi, his ultimate aim. While wearing this mask, Obito also developed long hair for a while. One explanation for this was that he wanted to look exactly like Madara Uchiha because that was his identity when he assaulted the Hidden Leaf Village and he wanted to mimic Madara Uchiha's hair. However, nobody is sure why he trimmed the long hair so soon after. It's rumored that they gave him another haircut because they wanted the fan base to guess who he was because they think we aren't smart enough. He also wore a black cloak with a purple lining, which he used to invade the Hidden Leaf with the Nine-Tailed Fox. He grew out his hair to resemble Madara's during the Uchiha Massacre and wore customary blue Uchiha robes. The masks really did a great job of concealing who he was. A noteworthy incident that occurred when Obito was wearing the mask was during his fight with Minato. Minato could not recognize Obito as they were fighting and thought he was Madara Uchiha. After a number of unsuccessful attempts to hit Obito, Minato ultimately struck him with a Rasengan and branded him with a Flying Thunder God Seal, enabling him to teleport to Obito whenever he pleased. The Naruto community became quite familiar with this incredible incident, furthering using them in most of their fan edits and giving it a spot in their favorite fights as well. Rini Sharingan Mask The final mask worn by Obito during the Fourth Great Shinobi War represented his mission to achieve Rini Sharingan for the Infinite Tsukomi. Another notable distinction between this mask and others is that it is the only mask that has two eye holes, so that he could observe the world through both his Sharingan and Rinnegan eyes. The third Tomoe on top of the mask is positioned at a spot where the Rini Sharingan eye would open up. The pattern his mask has is similar to the pattern seen on Kagoyua's forehead or the infinite Tsukomi moon. The ability of all of his masks to obscure Bakugan's vision should also be noted, as their primary function was to conceal his identity. These masks continued to serve this purpose well. Obito first put on this mask after his fight with Conan. Conan was a formidable foe, even for Obito. If he hasn't been so serious, she could have defeated him, but she was still able to break his mask and he was lucky because Conan's bombs could have been used to destroy an entire village. After attaining Rinnegan, he was capable of performing all six paths techniques with it, despite the fact that he was having a hard time controlling the visual prowess of a single Rinnegan. He could summon the demonic statue of the outer path, use chakra chains to restrain targets, and use the samasara of heavenly life technique to bring the dead back to life in exchange for his life. 
When Naruto caught Obito off guard during their fight in the Fourth Great Ninja War, he slammed a Rasengan on his face, ripping the mask apart and exposing the person behind it. The moment Obito's identity was revealed as the mask's wearer, Kakashi was understandably the most shocked. He couldn't believe that his long-declared deceased friend was the man hiding behind the mask all along. Following this incident, the series led to Obito and Kakashi's most emotional and calm battle of all time. As their actual conflict gets underway, Kakashi and Obito reflect on their childhood sparring sessions. Because, I mean, there's nothing better to do than to have a flashback mid-fight. Kakashi muses on how similar Naruto and the young Obito were, and he determines that the current Obito must be killed. It was also one of the most emotionally charged and intense bouts in the series, keeping us on the edge of our seats the entire time. Materials used It's still unknown what materials or procedures Obito employed to manufacture these masks, as materials that hindered Byakugan's vision weren't talked about as extensively in the Naruto series. But now in Boruto, we were introduced to a mineral dust that can obstruct the clairvoyant abilities. It's possible that Obito created his masks using this dust plus a method from the Uchiha clan. Obito may have started as a bit of a class clown, but he grew up to be a formidable shinobi in the history of this series and a force to be reckoned with. Despite being the series' major antagonist from the beginning, he recognized his younger self in Naruto and attempted to disprove his convictions by exposing how foolish they were. But no matter what he tried, he was powerless against Naruto's will, and in the end, he gave in and realized the shortcomings in his strategy for making the world a better place. Near the end, he joined forces with him and fought against Kagayua Otsutsuki, Obito was happy and full of hope before the hardships that the harsh environment they inhabited were forced upon him, which caused him to become vicious. He could have been brutal, but in his eyes, his actions were all taken to create a better future for others. These were the three masks that Obito utilized in his appearances throughout the series. As this is a subject that hasn't been touched frequently, there are bound to be details that I've missed regarding them. Let me know in the comment section down below, and while you guys are there, don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.